What a shop! Hope you're having a great day. Welcome to Q&A number four. I think it's four, right? <laughs> yeah, anyway, my new handles are in. I've got some started here already. So I figured I'd talk about big mistakes I've made with folders and what I would do if I hadn't made a folder yet. Ideas and, and things to look out for and, and try and, and best ways to make folders and, and just little things that I wish I would have told myself or I could go back and tell myself. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I kind of like this new design. It gives me plenty of room to mess with here and bring stuff down and turn around. These backspaces are just from knives I messed up. I'll make sure to put my website up in the card. It's the first down in the description. I got Amazon links, all that good stuff. Make sure to like, subscribe, leave me comments and questions for the next video. All right, let's get to it. The first thing I would do is, uh, now I saw Alex Steele make a folder, what, probably two years ago now. This was the first folder I made. Now I do it on camera. It's not as snappy, you know, if I try to do it like that, it's not gonna go up. But, well, now it will. <laughs> but yeah, this is the one I put on the mill and I, I cut out like Ecom Knives showed. If you look at this one, compared to like this one, it's a whole different thing. You know, this one's all fat. And this one's the design. Now I would say your first thing you can do is, uh learn like AutoCAD. That's what I did. I, I can't, I've tried to learn Fusion 360 a million times, but you know, if I could learn Fusion 360, I'd probably convert that little mini mill into CNC, but I just can't wrap my head around Fusion 360. See how much more snappier that is? <laughs> but this is the design I came up with on AutoCAD. And when I printed it out, Titanium is a real pain in the butt to work with. Now what I would suggest is, you know, once you get your design, see the good thing about AutoCAD is you can design a blade and you can design the uh, handle. And you can also put them on a pivot so it'll tell you how to close and how to open, and how to look and all that stuff. So that's the good thing about learning on CAD. You can tell I've used this bad boy. That's only been like a year. <laughs> yeah, it was last year about this time I made this thing. But I would say, okay, if you don't know how to do CAD, get some spring steel. That's why I brought up Alex Steel. He made a folder out of spring steel and uh, it seemed to work. So what I would suggest is get your design down because when I looked at when I had all mine water jet cut, you know, you can tell these have all been water jet cut. When it says on the New Jersey Steel Bear thing that you can even draw it on a napkin and they can water jet cut it, you know? But luckily I know AutoCAD, so that's the first thing. Try to find, now I've had AutoCAD for years. In fact, the, the copy I got was before they started doing the upgrade programs and all that, so mine's real old, but it works. You know, figure out AutoCAD, you might find like a free, like they have the free Photoshop uh, versions and all that, like Blender and stuff. I don't know if they have an AutoCAD one, but try to learn that. If not, take some spring steel. Well, either way, I would get some spring steel because it seemed to work for Alex Steel. Design the knife, you know, if you can print it out with AutoCAD, print it out, make it, you know, get it all designed out and then get them water jet cut. Now, for these, the titanium was 300 bucks for a 12 inch by 24 inch piece. That gives you 17 of these sizes. So that means I can make 17 knives. Now the water jetting is about 250 bucks. So all in for 17 handles, you it's you know almost 600 bucks for shipping and all that stuff. You know it's just good to round up and you know overestimate 600 bucks. So that means if you can make two of these and sell them for 300 or sell three of them for 200, it's paid for itself and everything else is profit. Now the first batch of these, I think I've got uh, two knives for myself and I've sold three. And there's two more. So out of 17 knives, I got like eight. <laughs> and this one, 
It's the last one left to finish, so I got handles and all that stuff on, to do on it. But still, I made my money back. I haven't made any real profit because, <laughs> you know, I messed up so many. But, yeah. So it, it's, it's water jet's the way to go for the handles. Now, the knives I cut out and designed all the knives by myself. You can see, I heat treated these like a week ago. But they're all cut from the designs that I made on the AutoCAD and then I kind of just shaped them a little different here and there. So water jet and AutoCAD are the two things I would suggest strongly. Because man, when you start, it, you know, I've been making knives five years and then I try to make a folder and it's like starting all over. So any little advantage you have. So the other one I have, the other suggestion I have, see how this lock bar drops right here? Well. What I, man, I have ruined probably nine or 10 blades. And blades, you know, all these blades have been heat treated. I would say most of these are from doing this. You mark out, you know, where the blade is supposed to drop, like Ecom Nye says, but it's not catching here. So it looks like you've, you know, it looks like it's catching up here. So you take more out and you take more out here but it's actually back here where it's catching up. Somewhere in the middle or somewhere back here it's catching, and all of a sudden you take it out from back there and the whole thing drops to the bottom. And that blade's gone because you can't make it bigger. Now sometimes I've had it where I've been making two knives and I switch them out and I've gotten lucky. Like uh, this one, that happened on this one. This one right here was actually made for this blade, but I cut this blade too short, so, uh, it didn't work. <laughs> but then I put this blade on these handles instead of these handles, and it fit perfect. So I got real lucky. I almost blew the last one. So watch out. If, if it looks like you're, you still got a bit to go here, make sure you got it out of this side too, or you ruin your blade. So <laughs> and my last suggestion for folders, Make jigs for everything. Now, if you know me, I'm not really into like bevel jigs for grinding bevels and all that. But man, when you start doing folders, you, you'll find little jigs to make it for everything. Like this jig for when I got a backspacer in and I don't want the blade in there, I'll put this in there and that way I can get into here and all that without worrying about everything dropping or going out of sync as I drop it. The irony I see as a, so it doesn't drop and I drop it. These are a new deal I made so I can put four different handles on. And what I was doing is I was using double-sided tape or painter's tape and super glue. Check this out. A guy contacted me and said, get a one inch vise. Now the only problem is, look, it fits perfect. I just got that much clearance for service grinding. The only thing is, it's such an awkward thing, it doesn't hold it. These are like 30 bucks a piece, so I bought two of them. And so it'll be coming soon, so I can put one on each end and then, you know, clamp. Because titanium isn't magnetized. And the service grinder, you click it to magnets, but these will click to magnets. So I put one on each end, bam. There's a little tip I just got today. <laughs> jigs, jigs for everything. I put my knives on this, you know, like that. Then clamp it, put the quarter inch bolt in and a clamp and then I do my do my grinding boom all right let's get to these questions some I had to put on for the next one <laughs> so Sean asked I, I think what he's talking about is you know like when I'm up against the grinder doing bevels I grind like this but I think he means can you grind bevels like this now, the only reason, I know a lot of guys that sharpen like this, you know, like the grind, the belt's coming down like that and they sharpen like that. The only problem I see with trying to grind the bevel like that, is when you're grinding like this, you can kind of see your angle and see how it's hitting, you know, and kind of push into it. Where this way, you kind of have to look over the blade and look behind the blade, if that makes sense. So you'd be kind of going like this and grinding up into it. But, you know, maybe, some people, maybe it works for. Maybe that is better, you know, for some people. I, I don't think I can do it because I'd be breaking my neck, you know, looking over trying to, because you have to start with the knife out 
and push into it to get the bevel. And you wouldn't really know where to stop or where you're, but you know, I'm sure there are people that do it that way. Give it a shot. Uh, for me, I don't think I could do it because I don't even sharpen like that. I sharpen you know, on the top of the belt like that. So, all right, so Damien asked, what's the best way to stop corrosion on a blade? Now what I use, because I sell my knives, is I buy EDCI. Uh, it's like, a, it's made just for like food safe knives and corrosion and all that. You know, you spray it on one, wipe it in, and then wait a little bit and wipe it off. But like Keith says, uh, I used to use mineral oil or you could use vegetable oil. I know on kitchen knives, that you can use them both. And that works. I used to use mineral oil on all my blades. But since I'm selling my knives now, EDCI is what I use the best. Yeah, mineral oil works great if it's for home use and all that, or vegetable oil. Keith says he also uses mineral oil on his stones. I used to use just water, because I water stones and all that. But I do remember an old stone I got where I was using WD-40, stuff like that. You know, when I hand sand, I use WD-40 sometimes, or because I got a big old gallon jug of it, I just put it in a spray bottle. See, this is WD-40, so. <laughs> Mineral oil is good because it's food safe, so that, that's the best reason, and it does work good. All right, so Jason gave me a tip, and I completely forgot about it. When I used that 5160, maybe even two years ago now, I bought a bottle of muriatic acid, and I did it in the PVC pipe, just like I did the ferric chloride. The only thing with muriatic acid, it works amazing and it takes scale off, no problem. But I would suggest if you're not in a ventilated garage, make sure you're outside. I still keep my bottle of muriatic outside and the tube and all that because man, ferric chloride, you can get on your hands and it'll stain you and all that. But muriatic acid, you know, even if you inhale it, you'll start choking and gagging and yeah, man, muriatic acid's some bad stuff, but it works amazing. So make sure you're ventilated or outside. But man, I, man I'm so glad you said that, Jason, because uh, I completely forgot about muriatic acid. Because I don't use 5160 that much, and I use anti scale and all that. So thanks for answering that. I appreciate that one. So Gravinder asked, man, I, You've been on my channel for years, and I, I always worry about getting your name wrong. <laughs> you supported this channel for, ooh, I can't even remember how long now. She asked about serrations on knives and how, if it makes it sharper. I, I don't do serrations, and I don't think I've even had, other than like cheap sets of knives that come with like one or two serrated knives, so I don't know anything about serrations, how to do them, if they make the knife sharper anything like that I <laughs> you got I guess it's good for cutting into like steak and all that I know you know you use serrated steak knives to cut the steak more but other than that I, I don't know anything about serrations so uh, I just started getting into cooking what a month ago or so two months ago so <laughs> I couldn't tell you <laughs> so let us know in the comments are serrations, do the serrations make it sharper or, uh, you know, what's the, what's the benefits of having a serrated knife? Let us know in the comments. Okay, so Ruben asked about uh, when he cuts his oak for making his handles, his, his scales shrink. And Martin replied that it's not dry enough or the oak's not cured enough. Now, I was a carpenter for like 15 years and built houses. But everything we got came from the wood yard, so it was already cured and finished or pressure treated. And if it was like, if we were doing cabinets and all that, it was all treated and finished and cured and all that. So I don't know much about the process. All, them, all the knife scales and stuff I use, I buy off like Etsy or eBay or, or guys that, you know, make knife scales. You know, so they're already cured and already stable. Most of them are either stabilized or hardwood, like snake wood. Desert iron wood. I don't know much about cutting your wood and using it. Maybe I would suggest if you're gonna uh, make some scales, cut a piece that's bigger than your knife and then take them in, maybe throw them in the oven. I don't know. You'd have to look up like a wood. How, to, how do you cure your wood and see if that helps because being a carpenter, I always had the wood finished. <laughs> 
You know, it's funny, they say, if you want to see the worst woodwork, go to a carpenter's house, because they do that all at work. They don't want to do it at home. <laughs> Stuff like that. <laughs> so CT Relic Hunter asked about my pivots. Well, if you go to like USA Knife Maker, they're called pivots. You can get them like eighth inch, three sixteenths, quarter inch, whatever. But they're really called standoffs. Threaded female standoffs. Like if you go to McMaster Car or MCS or stuff like that, they're called uh, standoffs. Now what I would suggest, if you like black, black oxide stuff, MCS has like the best torque screws. You know, these are 830 seconds. That's what the pivot is. It's an 830 second. 830 second threaded. So you can go to MCS or you can go MSC. Is it MSC or MSC? Anyway, you go to them and their black torques are the best. Usually when you buy torque screws, they're black oxide and the oxide rubs off and then all of a sudden they turn silver. Now places like USA Knife Maker, you can buy the pivots and they'll actually send you screws with it. So, you know, if you like silver screws, USA Knife Maker might be the best place to go because you get the screws for each pivot where you have to buy a box from, M from MSC, you'd have to buy, or McMaster car, you'd have to buy the screws separate. You know, I like the torque screws, but you can buy any kind of 830 second screws you want. And also, once you get pivots, go to like Home Depot and buy 830 second screws. That way you can screw them in and hit your pivots out and you don't have to worry about, it. never hit the pivot head, because then you warp it and you mess it all up. What I do is I take one, two, three blocks and put the scale, like if I was going to do this, I take it like that and I would thread a long screw into it and then knock the screw out. That way, you you know, if, you, if you've damaged the head of the screw, that doesn't matter. But that way your threaded pivot doesn't mess up. And that way you can always thread it in and stuff like that. And, you know, it's, it's worked for me for all the handles. Little bonus tip. <laughs> Home Depot all that has 830 seconds. Or if you get, uh, you know, whatever your pivot size is, I just use quarter inch pivots and always have. So Triax Gear asked me about liners and pins. Now pins I usually get off of Amazon. You know, I got a whole bunch of brass pins and stuff like that here. <laughs> In fact, I used one of these to, uh, to fill out that because this was a uh, eighth inch this is my knife so I like to do experiments but the uh, the eighth inch pivot or the eighth inch pin was too small so I drilled out a 3 16 now some people ask why did I just use the 3 16 because I didn't know if 3 16 was gonna be too big or not so now that I know it fits I might have to make 3 16 hole. see all these little things with folders man I'm telling you it's like starting over <laughs> But anyway, back to liners. I just use uh, G10 liners. And I get them from like Alpha Knife Supply. Alpha Knife Supply, when you're getting G10, has the best sizes and the best prices. You know, Jazz, USA Knife Maker, they all sell G10, but they all sell small pieces. Alpha Knife Supply has the big pieces and for good prices. This is uh, 0 0.055. So I just put this on, you know, Carbon fiber, epoxy all with G-Flex, boom, you're good to go. Or wood, anything. So, yeah, that's what my liners are on, just G10. You can use my Carter or whatever you want. Once I get these folders down, I'm gonna have to start doing carbon fiber inlays. <laughs> so that's about it. Make sure to leave more questions for next week's. I've already got two or three, because I ran out of room and didn't feel like making a third sheet. This is already two sheets right here. <laughs> So yeah, leave comments, leave tips, suggestions. If you have a better answer than me for some of these questions, go ahead and leave those in the comments because uh, I'm just kind of saying how, what I know and uh, what I've experienced. You might have a different experience and be like, oh man, I tried that and it didn't work or I tried this instead and it worked better. So leave those in the comments. So do me a favor, make sure to like, subscribe hit the bell you know man when you start editing you know you start catching on to phrases 
Like, all that good stuff. I've been saying that way too much and it drives me crazy. So I'm trying to cut it out and, <laughs> and only say it a little bit. I'll make sure to put my website up in the cards. It's the first down in the description. Amazon links are down there. I got shirts on my website. I've only got two knives left. Man, they're going quick. I gotta make some more. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll make sure to put I'll make sure to put the whole playlist to all the other Q&As right here. And my website's right there. Hope y'all having a great day. And as always, take it easy. Man, by the end of these, I always lose my voice. <laughs>